Hello everyone. Happy day to you. Today is Sunday, December 5th. We are post solar eclipse energies. I hope you guys enjoyed your solar eclipse. I hope that it was not too turbulent on you. I know um, I've been feeling the effects of the eclipse in terms of being super tired. I have been sleeping like I've been sleeping much longer than I normally would, which really only translates, well, it translates into me going to bed later, which then also translates into me waking up at like, or at least getting out of bed around six instead of five. <laughs> Big difference, but like whatever. I've, I've, I've felt it. I've been tired. I've been drained, sluggish. There was a day, it was Thursday. I had uh, completed some readings that I wanted to do and I sat down at my computer to get that upload process going um, and all of a sudden I literally felt like I was gonna fall asleep in my chair it was very interesting but anyway we're back to normal upload speeds are great again so excellent let's keep let's keep doing things yeah so today is Sunday um, again December 5th and this solar eclipse was a moment to usher in a brand new energy to start a brand new phase in our lives in our cycles and I'm definitely vibing with that right now um, as you can see with this video so this video today there is no tarot involved we are not doing readings today we are working with the garden today so this is going to be a garden update um, a little bit of a garden vlog a part of this new energy that is being ushered in for me is really wanting to do much more with gardening and I love sharing, as you guys know, and you guys love hearing and seeing it, so I want to share the garden with you, and what I want to do today is I want to share you my process, because Sundays are my general maintenance day. So if there's anything that needs to be done with my plants or anything like that, if I need to maybe fertilize or maybe start some, or if I want to start some new seeds or whatnot, whatever, Sunday is going to be my day to do all of that. Um, now. Maybe it's not the best term, general maintenance. General maintenance happens throughout the week. You know, if anything needs to happen, if they need to be watered, whatnot, whatever, then I do that. But Sunday is going to be the day where I do the most work, right? Especially when it comes to seeds. Like if I want to start new seeds or something like that, I'm gonna, I want to start them on a weekly basis so that there is at least, you know, once, to, once we get to the point where we have a lot of seeds growing and a lot of new plants coming, we can work with them at about a weekly basis, right? To kind of pace ourselves here. I have a number of things that I wanna to do today. So this is, a good, um, this is a good day to really talk about all this. And again, this is the, this is the new energy that the, this whole eclipse situation and everything we've been going through over the last six months, six to eight months, eight months, I wanna say, this is the new energy that I'm ushering in for myself. So garden vlog, yay! I'm starting a garden vlog, guys. I want to I want to try and maybe do a weekly thing with this. Operative word there is try. We're not going to make any promises. <laughs> if I've learned anything over the last year and a half, it's to stop less talky, more dewy, right? <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. So let's get started here, and I just want to give you guys an update talk about what we're going to do, and then we'll get into the process. So first thing I want to start with here are my seedling trays, which are right here in front of me. So here are my trays. As you guys can see, the tomato is doing really quite well. This is going to probably need to be replanted very soon. Um, they can probably last another week in these little pods here. Um, and I think I'm just going to let that happen because I don't necessarily have a place for them yet. These tomatoes are most likely going to go in, in planters to start. Um, I do have an idea of somewhere that I can plant them on the ground, uh, but we'll get into that in a second. These here are my pepper tree seedlings that I started. This actually, I started these uh, about two weeks ago, I want to say. And these were seedlings that I popped from uh, a pepper pod. I just literally opened up the pod, picked out the seeds, and planted them in these little spots. And luckily, all five of them popped. So I'm really excited about these. And then this next tray over here, 
this is right in the middle as you can see with the little green seedlings popping up here that is anise basil now that basil this is my second round trying with anise basil i did start in this tray here um, but as you can see this row here and this row here this was the very first tray that i started about three weeks ago i want to say um, and these two pods this one was supposed to be a uh, spinach this one was anise basil this is the tomato this was supposed to be more anise basil but as you can see that got destroyed um, by the rain to be honest we can talk about that later and then these are the peppers uh, the, I'm sorry the chili peppers these two pods didn't pop and I have a pretty good understanding of probably why I think I planted these seeds too deep and the, the, the seedlings weren't able to reach the top. I don't know, I think I wanna start these over. Spinach technically takes about 10 to 20 days to pop, and we're only about 14 days into that, but I think I just wanna start these over because I have a sinking feeling that these are just not gonna work. Okay, but this row here was uh, in anise basil, and I decided, I decided to start that one over because um, those seeds originally I got from a seed package, but then I went back a few days later to the store, to my new favorite gardening store here, and the guy there ended up giving me cuts of actual seed pods from the plant that he had growing there, and I can show you guys those in a second. Um, I'll show them to you later, so just so you can see what they are, but those seeds popped first i have i have two two examples of those i'll we'll get into that in a second but this tray here were are the seeds that i got the second time around from the cutting from the actual plant i have another little thing here this is a little germination experiment and these as you can see there are roots down here there are definitely some seedlings that have popped in here we're going to be planting those today but those, these seedlings here came from the seed package. No, I'm sorry. These also came from the cutting that I got. And this row here came from the package that I bought. So what that's saying to me so far, you guys, is that the seeds obviously that came from the plant, which are right here and in that thing right there, those seeds are fresher, okay? Because these have not even popped at all. Granted, I may have planted them too deep, but anyway, that's that so as far as the trays go we are going to be most likely resetting these two and we're going to be planting new seeds all of which i have right here we're going to talk about that including these little seedlings here okay so that's one thing that we're going to be doing today the next thing that we're going to want to do is maybe water well no i don't really need to water today because it did rain yesterday a good amount it's been raining this week and so everything is nice and moist um, the thing about being in this tropical climate I live in Puerto Rico as you guys know but in this tropical climate um, it's very humid and it rains quite often during this season it's the winter um, and I've noticed that I really don't need to water all the time because the soil really retains moisture here so that's that's excellent even if they've been out in the Sun all day the soil is still able to retain a lot of the moisture, which is perfect. So let's give you a little bit of an update here. Um, we have we have the cacao trees here. These are doing well. Not really going to do anything with these today. I might give them a shot of some of the um, organic fertilizing fluid, which I'll show you guys in a second. But these are doing well. As you can see, this cacao tree here. Is growing new leaves which I love as well as this one can't really see there they are there's a new leaf right there there's a one right there there's one coming up here so these are doing quite well and if you guys remember I don't I, I mentioned before that I thought those were tomato I have no idea what those are anymore maybe they are tomato maybe who knows but um, so that's nice here let me show you this this I don't know if you guys can see it. This is spearmint. That's a spearmint plant. She's doing quite well. Um, she's doing really quite well. And it's because of this stuff that I want to show you. 
So this is what I use for fertilizer, right now at least. Uh, it's uh, Lixiviado, that's in Spanish. But it, what it, basically what it is, is um, it's from worm castings. And if you're unfamiliar with worm castings, it's just another way of calling it, it's worm poop, basically. And worm castings are like black gold for your garden, especially if you're doing organic gardening. Um, worm casting, worm poop is like one of the best things you can use for your garden. Um, there you have, you have uh, worm castings and then you also have compost. Worm casting is basically compost because the worms crawl in, the worms crawl out, <laughs> but they, go, they, they crawl around the soil and they eat stuff, dead organic matter, all that kind of stuff. And they digest it and then they poop it out. And then the poop or the castings is then available for the other microorganisms within your soil to munch on, to feed off of, and then either like the, the bacteria and all that kind of stuff. And then they either poop that out themselves, and then that is what becomes the plant-soluble uh, nutrients that the plant can now take up and use for its growth. Or those die, those like bacteria and whatnot, they die, and other bacteria or uh, other organisms like, say, nematodes and whatnot, they come in and they eat them. It's like this big cycle, you guys, right? So when we're fertilizing here, when I talk about fertilizing, when it comes to like organic gardening and stuff like that, I'm not really feeding the plants. I mean, I mean technically you are because of the system that is, that is in place here. But really what I'm doing is I'm feeding the microorganisms in the soil. And that's what I use this for. And those micro by feeding the microorganisms in the soil, you are actually then feeding the plant because then all those microorganisms do their job in tandem with the plant and make all these kinds of nutrients and whatnot plant soluble or available for the plant to now take up in its root system through its root system and then to use for uh your growth and everything like that so so when it comes to like this process of organic gardening that i'm doing here i'm focusing on building the microorganisms or the community of microorganisms within the soil and when you do that you don't really have to fertilize. I mean, you can ob obviously I'm going to do certain things like I'm going to do something specific for the tomato plants when they get to the point where they're producing fruit. At that stage, you really want to focus on adding phosphorus to the to the soil or just making sure there's enough phosphorus phosphorus available. Just because it's the phosphorus phosphorus <laughs> that is used by the plant at that stage to make its flowers or to make its fruit. So there are specific things that you can do at certain processes or certain points in your plant's growth or in the stages of growth of your plant. But really what I'm focusing on here with this fertilizing situation is feeding the soil. We want to feed the microorganisms, the diverse microorganisms within the plant, within the soil that live symbiotically with your plant. Um, the plant literally works with, communicates with the bacteria, the fungi, the nematodes, the arthropods, the, all of those little microorganisms. It, uh, it literally communicates with the microorganisms by sending out something, I can never remember this, the, this word, but it basically sends out little sh uh, sugars that, that speak to the organisms that are living with the root system. And those sugars are signals to those organisms to say, hey, I need this. And then we'll say the bacteria goes out and says, I got you, boo, and goes out and gets all the stuff that it needs, eats it up, nom, 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 poops it out. And then, the, then, then the, uh, the roots of the plants draw up those nutrients and then the plants grow, okay? This is why we want to focus on organic gardening, not chemical synthetic gardening because it's those chemicals that destroy literally kill the good the bad ones sure but the good ones as well okay it kills off the organisms the microorganisms in your soil which then makes your plant unable to grow okay so that's what i mean by fertilizing i'm not really feeding the plant i'm feeding the soil that the plant is living in yes Alrighty, guys so we're gonna get started here with our tray one of our trays of seeds and one of the first things that I want to do is 
investigate what has happened with these here. So we're actually going to, and like I said, um, spinach does take about 10 to 20 days to, to germinate, to sprout, uh, but I'm willing to sacrifice these in the name of science, I guess you could say, just so that we can see what may have potentially gone wrong, why they may have not sprouted. Um, I mean, I have a good idea already. I, th I just feel like I planted them a little too deep. Um, unfortunately, if we do find that they are sprouting, then it might be a tragedy. But I'm willing to sacrifice these in the name of science because also I want to start some new stuff. So let's just take this one. Let's just pop this out and see what we've got going on here. Now, I don't want to destroy this, but let's just see. Take this bad boy out here. And I can reuse this soil. Aha, uh -huh. see this the seed didn't even sprout. Here we go. This is the this is the this is a um this right here, as you can see. This is a spinach seed. And it didn't even sprout. Uh it looks like I just heard myself say it looks like it was going anaerobic. So yeah, we can go ahead and we can go ahead, definitely go ahead and reuse this. I'm gonna take the seed out. Uh oh, what do I do with it? Oh, here it is. I'll just take the seed out, just um, you know, just to be safe, so that it doesn't end up sprouting later. Although I doubt it's going to. Um, and we can definitely reuse this pod. Uh, let me get. Yeah, hold on a second. Okay, I wanted to get a little container that I can put the rest of this uh, soil in, so I can reuse it. I did pop two more of these, and sometimes it seems like the seeds just disappear. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, maybe some of the lizards that are around or something have come and maybe dug up the seeds or something like that. I don't know, but I just popped two more of these, and I can't even find, I can't even find the, um, the spinach seeds that I planted in here. But it's also entirely possible that they just disintegrated. They, you know, they um, decomposed because maybe they weren't good seeds. But here's another one. Let's see. And I should, technically I should be able to find this. Aha! I found it. Here we go. Here's, here, oh, is this? Yeah, this is it. This is, if you can see, this is another spinach seed but it didn't even pop like none of them popped so far any of these popped i mean they didn't even try or maybe they weren't able to that's entirely possible i'm not so sure about this um this little planter thing here because it's kind of difficult to get the seeds back out um I, maybe it'll be easier if there are you know if there's a root system here that helps to keep the structure um, if you guys have any advice in how to get these out effectively without destroying everything, I would love to hear it. We're going to pop this last one. And again, this soil can be used. This can be reused here. So, Oh, it looks like some, there may have been something growing here. Maybe not. But again, can't quite find... Aha! Here we go. There's our other seed here. Here's another spinach seed. Again, didn't even pop. Nothing. Just a big old pile of nothing. Okay, not a problem. So what I'm gonna do is instead of, let's just push this down. Instead of trying to do it again this way, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and germinate these spinach seeds in the same way that I have these, uh, the basil seeds germinating both my very first round with the big ones that I showed you that are out in the back and the new ones that we have here. So in this, this tiny little apparatus here, which we'll get into, we'll get into that later. But let's scoop this because this soil can definitely be reused and we can reuse the soil in here, all right? Now, now let's check on the next row which is going to be a, a row of anise basil. Now, I highly doubt we're going to be able to find the seeds here because if you look, do I have it? 
No, I'll show you in a second when I when we get into that little pod thing. But it, the uh, basil seeds are very, very tiny, okay? Um, and they're black, so I highly doubt we're actually going to find them in here. But let's just check. Let's just see. We're actually... No, okay. I was thinking maybe we had something growing in here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's getting a little bit green. That's a good thing because it's it's moss. It means that there's there's humidity in the area, so that's good. And what your 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 seeds need moisture, humidity, and heat. Okay, the heat is going to help to create the humidity, but they need that. They basically need to be incubated. And when I get into talking about this little pod thing here, I'll tell you why it's so necessary. But um, having a lot of humidity, especially for the seedlings, is a very, very good thing. Now, part of why this may not have worked also, regardless of, other than the fact that I may have buried the seeds a little too deep, is that this may have dried out to the point where the seeds couldn't germinate. And again, I'm not finding anything. I'm not even finding any sort of roots or anything like that. And I'm, there's no way I'm going to be able to find, find these seeds in here. So that's fine. Let's check this one. And I feel like even if, if the seeds were have to have sprouted, like when we get to transplanting the tomatoes over here, I feel like it'll probably get it'd be easier to get these pods out of here intact because there will be a root system to help keep the structure in place. But it's looking like no dice. No dice all around, which is okay. That's the thing about gardening, you guys. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't work, just take the lesson from it and apply it to your next round, yeah? There are no mistakes, there are no failures, there are just lessons, things to be learned, processes to be improved upon, and all that good stuff, yeah? All right, so these, as I, as I suspected, these are a whole bunch of nothing which is perfectly fine because like I said before, this soil can be reused and we can plant some new stuff in here, yeah? So, this is tray number two. Um, unfortunately, I, this little pod here, this was a little, uh, a little sproutling that um, my friend at the garden store gave me. It, this is the water apple tree, if you guys remember me. That's Paul, by the way. But this is the garden, the, the, the water apple tree, I think it's called, um, that you guys heard me talk about before. Unfortunately, it didn't make it. As you can see, it is like completely dead. I think it may have tried to grow roots here, as you can see, but I don't know if it worked. It's dead. Like it's real. I almost, I kind of just want to put it back in there and let it do its thing. I don't know, you guys, nature is resilient. Like part of me, part of me kind of feels like it'll just come back to life at one point. I'm not so sure about that, but that's okay. Let's move forward. What we're gonna do with tray number two here is we are going to take some of the seedlings that have sprouted in here that I'm gonna show you in a second. And we're gonna get them into some of these pods that don't have anything coming up yet. So this is the second round of anise basil that I planted. And these seeds did not come from a seed pack. These seeds came from this, which is the cutting from the actual plant that my friend at the garden store gave me. And if you want to work with seeds, you guys, I highly recommend that you just, like, the fresher you can get them, the better. You can obviously buy from stores. Um, if you do buy a seed pack from a, from a store, um, make sure to check the date on them. So these, this is a pack of spinach that I got from uh, Home Depot last year that have literally just been sitting in my cabinet. I haven't done any, really haven't done much with them. But as you can see here, there is a date at the bottom. Let me see if I can focus on that. Well, it says sell by, and then there is a specific date. You wanna get some, it's literally like buying produce, right? Or buying anything from a grocery store. You wanna check the sell by date. 
because you want to check to see, you know, how fresh it is, right? Seeds can give you a long time, you know, years if you store them correctly. Uh, but that doesn't mean that some of the potency may not reduce as time goes on, right? So, okay, that's fine. So anyway, I planted these seeds from these from this cutting, from these cuttings here. As you can see, I took a bunch off of this one. And these seeds, these seed sproutlings seem to be doing quite well. I don't know how well you can see. Um, can't really see it so well, but here, let me try and... But if you look, I don't know if you can see, but if you look, there are little green, little green little tops, right? Those are, that's anise basil coming up. And so what I wanna do is I wanna take some of these sproutlings that are in this container, and I'm gonna plant them in some of the spaces that don't have anything coming up yet. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. What you're gonna to need to do this, you're gonna need a pair of tweezers here, okay? You can use tweezers, you can use your fingers. I like to use tweezers because it's delicate and it's easier to control, um, especially if you have thick, thick fingers. I mean, I don't, mine are fairly slender, but I just like to use that extra little amount of precision, right? But before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that these tweezers are clean. Whenever you're working with any sort of tools, whether you're clipping your plants or working with something like for the seedlings to transplant them or to move them around, you want to make sure that your tools are clean because you don't want any diseases, especially with the seedlings or if you're cutting something, you don't want any diseases to now infect your plant because the tools that you were using were not sterile, okay? So I'm just going to take some rubbing alcohol on a cotton swab. And I'm just going to make sure that the, oops, that this is nice and sterilized, yeah? And rubbing alcohol is good, you know, you just have to rub it on here, give it a few seconds, it'll air out to air dry. If it doesn't air dry, maybe if there's like an excess amount of the stuff of the alcohol on here, you can wipe it off with a paper towel or something like that. I wouldn't recommend going, making contact with the rubbing alcohol, especially with your seedlings. I don't know how well that's gonna, you know how well they're gonna take that. So I've got another piece of paper towel here and it's fairly dry, but I just wanna make sure that all of the rubbing alcohol is gone. Okay, and we're nice and sterile. So now, now we're going to delicately pick these out of here. Now I have one, two, three, four that you can see. You see the little, little spots with the green heads? Those have really sprouted. As you can see, this is a better angle, right? It's still kind of blurry, but you see there's four of them right there. Those I definitely want to focus on. I'm going to give them each one a pod. And then there are two more down here that seem to be doing their thing. Three, actually. So we're going to do those as well, all right? So let's see. Where don't we have anything growing? Let's see, we can use this one, and this, and this, so that's three right there, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. So here we go. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make a little bit of a dent, and you don't wanna make it too big, you guys, because this is already starting to come up, so you really, you wanna give it enough space so that it can really start to get its roots down there, but you don't wanna give it too much of a struggle trying to get up above the ground. So, actually, let me start over. Okay, let's flatten this out a little bit. And I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to go a little bit, just like that. Can't really see it. Just like that. Nice little indent. You don't go anywhere. Then, I'm going to take my tweezers and my sproutling and I'm going to be very delicate. And I'm actually going to grab it by... Sometimes, the last... Actually, actually, what I want to do, I was going to grab it by the, by the seed cap, but... I don't, you guys can't really see it, but you see those, those little brown spots in there. That's where some roots are growing at the bottom. Can you see that? No, not really, but okay. There are some roots growing at the bottom. So what I found the first time was I want to take the paper with it because I want to take all of the roots that it has grown. I want to get all of that. So I'm just going to, this is a very delicate process, you guys. Very delicate. You don't want to create too much trauma. You don't want to destroy the roots. Um, the last time I did this, actually, I used toilet paper and the paper broke up really easily. That doesn't seem to be the case here. 
And it's interesting because it was recommended that you use paper towel, but I actually like using toilet paper because that way the paper can go with it, you know, and you don't, you won't traumatize it too much by ripping it up. You see, yeah, I got to rip the paper with it. All right, so we're actually going to take this page, this whole thing out of here. Take this whole thing out. And I'm going to do this a little more manually. I don't know if you guys can see, but if you look at the bottom here, there are roots. Can't really see it, but there are roots growing underneath. And you really want to take those with you, right? Because that's part of the root system of the plant. So I'm just going to rip this page. Yeah, see, this paper is... This is bounty paper towel, y'all. This shit is dicky thick. <laughs> okay, anyway. And it really doesn't matter if the paper goes with it, right? Because the paper is going to decompose. And will probably provide some extra nutrients to your plant. However, this is like bleached paper. So like, the, I don't know. But anyway, plants are resilient, man. They can... They can do anything, all right? So we're just gonna take this and we're just gonna put it right in there. We're gonna cover it just enough, just enough so that it's in, it's in there, right? But it's not completely covered. Like it can, it can grow from here, all right? So I just wanna keep the top of it. You can't really see this, but I, I just wanna keep the top of it reaching to the sky. You don't wanna cover it too much. Bam, just like that. So as you can see, the seedling is in there, right? It's not gonna to focus too well, but the seedling's in there. And if you look behind it, you see that white stuff, that's the paper that it came from. And that's going to be our process. And you see how there's, it's just poking out of the top. I can't even find it now. What am I looking at here? There it is. So it's just poking out of the top. I might want to get it covered a little bit better, but that's probably just, that's probably going to be fine. And then let's see if I can show you guys the other side of this. You see that one right there. You see those, that brown stuff? Those are roots. Those are the roots of one of these big ones right here. Okay. And that's really what you want to focus on. You want to focus on getting all of that root into the pod. And especially if they sprouted like this, you want to give them, you want to allow them to have reach the sunlight. You don't want to cover it completely at this point. Yes? So we're going to do that with the rest of these here. I have three more that have those green little shoots, the, the little tops. So I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to put one right here. Yeah, get them a nice little, a nice little spot and we're gonna pull them off so i'm gonna take this one be very careful not to destroy the roots it's like from the bottom okay good Get this one here very delicate process you guys very very delicate oh, oh be careful now very delicate okay so we've got this here we're gonna just get this right in there you guys unfortunately you can't see too much oh no <gasps> oops okay like that let's push this in all right get you pull you up a little bit and then just bury it Make sure it's covered enough to be in the soil, but not enough to be overtaken. We want to make sure that that green little spot right there is able to reach more of the sunlight, is able to continue breaking through. Yes? So there you go. Can't really see it from your view, but <laughs> it's planted. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to start, I want to get some new seeds started. I definitely want to start planting more tomato plants um, because I want to, you know, give these out to people or sell them to someone who would like a tomato plant. But I also want more plants so that I can use them down in that space down there that I meant that I showed you guys. So we're going to work with these seeds here. 
these are the tomato seeds and they've already done so well I, I'll say that because I have I planted five a few weeks ago and I got three out of them so these it feels to me that these seeds are quite viable so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant another five of them and I'm gonna take you through that process and I want to show you what I use so this is the potting soil that I'm using to start my seeds in as you can see it has perlite in it which is all those little white things perlite is a natural mineral it's a rock, you know, that's found naturally. This, this, um, this type of soil here, this is peat moss based. Now, I wouldn't normally go for peat moss, um, mainly because it's not the most sustainable uh, uh, planting medium. So, we are going to plant some more of these tomato seeds. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to pat this down, make sure it's nice and firm. Okay, it's still, there's still a good amount of moisture in here, but I might want to add a little bit more. We'll talk about watering and what type of water to use in a second. But I'm going to take more of what I've saved here from popping the one, from, from removing it from these pods before, and I'm just going to put it in here. All right, and I'm going to make sure it's nice and firm. I'm going to fill it up pretty high because you don't really need too much space um, at the top. You want to give it more space at the bottom so that it has fruit so that the roots have somewhere to go okay because the roots are going to go are going to go grow down and out right so we want to we want to give it and you want to make sure it has a nice firm foundation so you really do want to like kind of pack it in there you know at least give it a nice firm bed for it to rest on top of and then once that's all fill filled excuse me we are going to put the seeds in and put them and then cover it a little bit with soil. Now, when you do this, you guys, as you can see, this bag, this is all dry, right? So you want to dump some of the, your potting soil out in a container. Uh, like I use, I'm using this one here. You want to dump it out in a container and then get and then moisture, uh, moisten it from that point. You don't necessarily want to put a bunch of dry soil in your pod and then put the seed in there and then water it because number one, um, the soil is actually going to sink down, right? Because there's air in it and everything in it. And once it starts to moisten up, it's going to come back together. And so you're going to end up with not as much soil as you thought. But also, uh, if you were to put all the soil in, put the seed in, top it, and then water it, watering it from that point of view or from that moment could actually disturb your seed, right? Could actually disturb the bed that you've created for the seed. So you wanna moisten your soil first and then put it in here. And, and you don't want it to be too moist. You want it to be, I like to have it at like the consistency of Play-Doh. Some people say the consistency of a wet sponge, but you wanna, you know, when you, when you moisten it, you put it in your, grab it in your hand here. This isn't as moist. But you grab it in your hand here and you squeeze oh no there it goes yeah you squeeze it and you can feel the water come out i don't know if you got yeah see just like that okay that's the kind that's the consistency that you want you want it to be nice and moist and you want it to be fairly somewhat firm right and then you just pack it in there pack it pack it pack it right create a nice firm bed for it okay and then you're going to take your seeds I'm gonna dump some of these out on this paper towel here. Now, with the, this is another situation in which you wanna take multiple seeds and put them in, in like multiple seeds in each pod to maximize your potential for having something sprout. Uh, these seeds seem really viable, okay? I only put one in each of these and three of them popped. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take two and I'm gonna use my tweezers very delicately Whoops, uh-oh. <laughs> well, there's a seed in there. That could grow at some point, but it's pretty deep. See, I'm just gonna take my seed. I'm gonna rest it, lay it right on top here. And I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna space them out a little bit because if both of these seeds pop, I could potentially um, take this whole pod out and remove them so I have two plants, right? You wanna be very delicate with that because you don't wanna destroy the roots but this is also gonna maximize our potential. So I'm gonna take two pods, I'm sorry, two seeds. 
Uh oh, drop that one. Okay, carefully now. Oh my god, I keep dropping all of them. So let me use my fingers. <laughs> there's another seed. Okay, make sure there's space. There's two right there. One here. One here. One there. One there. And then, boop. Oh, that's two. Boop. Okay. Maybe leave that one in there. Ah, I got it. Okay. There we go. So we have them resting on our bed, right? Which is good. And now we're going to take a little bit more soil and we're going to cover these. But you don't want to, you don't want to pack it down too much at this point because we want to make sure that it's able to break through at the top. Okay. So we're just going to gently, lightly cover this. Cover it, you know, get it in complete darkness, cover it from the sun. It doesn't really need too much sun right now. It just needs the heat, um, the humidity, the moisture, and that will allow it to pop and grow. We're just going to pack that down a little bit. And this one. And this one. There we go. Now I'm going to run and grab my spray bottle. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a little bit moisture, a little bit of moisture on top. Now it's already moist, you guys. Like if you followed this process, your soil is already moist, so it doesn't need too much. But I'm just going to give it a little spritz on top just to make sure it's got some. Come on now. Come on now, you, you thing. There we go. Just give it a little spritz. Just a little spritzy, spritzy, spritz. Boop. And there you go. There are your seeds. Yay! Next, we are going to plant some more of this spinach. And I really, like, I'm so, I really want to get some spinach growing because, like, it's so good for you. It's so healthy. I love spinach. So we definitely want to get as much spinach growing as we can. And I definitely want to plant some of that in, down in the space down by where the mama papa uh, 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 pepper chili pepper tree is so I'm going to follow the same process that I did with the tomato seeds that that should be good that looks like it's about a half inch of space I don't know how well you guys can see it but that's about a half inch space between the bed here that I'm making and the very top of the situation yeah so we're going to Take our seeds and I kind of want to do one per pod you guys I'm not gonna lie I really just I want to save these seeds and get as much out of them as I can and these are fairly big seeds right I mean look at this these are pretty big in comparison especially in comparison to the spinach I'm sorry the um the tomato seeds but also in comparison to the basil seeds right all right so there's a seed right there okay so I'm going to take these and I'm just going to place them right in the center on our bed. Yeah. You don't even really need to like, you don't even need to like pat them in or get them firmly in because you're going to put some on top, you know, so just rest them down on there and then take more of your soil. Oh, I need more, but you can take more of your soil. There you go. Just like that. Okay. And there we go. I already feel like this is going to work out much better this time. I don't know. I just, I just get that feeling. So I'm excited. This is going to be good. Make sure that's nice and firm in there. Again, when you put your, your, your top layer on here, you don't want to pat it down as much as you did the first time because it already has that bed to rest on to do its thing, but then also it has this covering and you want to make this fairly loose so that that gives it its best chance of being able to come back up out of, the, out of the soil to greet the sun, yes? And just like the last one, we're going to take our spray bottle and remember guys this is already moist so you don't have to do too much you just want to make sure the top layer is nice and moistened so the next thing i want to do i'm, I'm, I'm winding down here so 
Um, actually, really the last thing I want to do is I want to take this oregano and I want to get it into a pot so it can start to grow. So I have a big old pot here that I've filled with my organic potting soil. I also put um, a decent, a good amount of the worm castings in there. I don't have much left. So, so I got this in here. I'm digging a nice little, nice little crevice for it. I'm going to take my oregano, yes, in my beer bottle, gently pull it out of the water so not to disturb any of the roots that we've got going, just like that. We're gonna take this and we're gonna plant it right into the soil. So I'm gonna take it, put it right in here, gently. Gonna cover up the base with the roots and I can definitely put, uh, Hold on, I could definitely put some more soil in here, but that's okay. We're gonna leave it where it is, and we're just gonna cover it, all right? So we're gonna cover it with some more soil. Whoops. Uh-oh. Don't waste your soil, Eric. All right, see, we're just gonna cover this here. And you see how most of the plant is up above the soil? That's a good thing, right? Okay, that's good right there. That should be enough. And now it's got a nice home where it can build some more roots. And I'm going to take some more of my super juice and throw it in there. Get it nice. Get that in there really nice. And then I'm gonna also give it some more of my water. Just my regular water. Just to make sure it's nice and saturated. Now I did not moisten this soil before I put it in the planter, but that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Um, got a good amount of moisture in there. Is it coming out the bottom? Nothing's coming out the bottom yet. I, I want to give it, I want to make it just run off a little bit just to make sure it's nice and saturated. And then I'm not necessarily going to have to water it much over the next few days. Because like I said, the soil here retains a lot of the moisture. So that should be good. There we go. And we're going to give this a nice sunny space for it to thrive in. My garden and maintenance is done for the day. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm definitely looking more, looking forward to giving you more garden updates. I hope you guys have a fantastic Sunday and you have a fantastic week ahead. And I look forward to connecting with you guys again very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye!